but how do we say when we talk about what might be considered a general act one structure, because obviously the hero is going to be called to do something in some way. What are the differences between that and a heroine's labyrinth kind of story and a hero's journey kind of story? Well, uh, one of the few things that crossed over from the hero's journey uh, into the heroine's labyrinth is the call to adventure. And part of the reason for that, I believe, is the call to adventure is uh, or an inciting moment. These are things I think that are inherent to a story, uh, regardless uh, of which structure you use. So you're going to get something that pulls your character into uh, a, a, the story, into the action that and the drama that drives the story from the beginning to its conclusion. So um, for me, it was setting up the labyrinth. Uh, one of the, so heroes and heroines both tend to start in a, a home environment. And one of the early things that are deviations I noticed was a lot of heroes, there was a claim on their labor. The society, the home society has a claim on the, the hero's labor. And this didn't seem to be as prevalent in heroine centric stories. They seem to be, especially in earlier literature and mythology, um, kind of steered toward uh, the three archetypes of the, the vir you know, the, the, the innocent virgin, the fertile bride and the chaste mother. That seemed to be what societies or native cultures wanted from them. And, and in the hero's journey, there was a claim on the hero's labor and then the hero gets swept away from the native culture in a lot of these stories. So uh, establishing the labyrinth for me was very important because I believe the labyrinth is a socio-cultural structure that's manifested in this imagery and in this feeling. Okay, you know, I'd uh, go in, uh, I suppose it's appropriate, more generally, um, and I'm delighted to hear the specifics and the observations that you've made. Um, I see the openings of films as... Um, a kind of a, a building of a relationship with the audience where you are uh, trying to motivate them to follow your story. And you want to give them um, a certain kind of orientation. And I think that may be what you're talking about with establishing the labyrinth and the heroine's place in that. And, uh, you know, what are the forces and the tensions and uh, desires uh, that uh, will get the audience involved. Uh, I think there's there are operations. There are sort of universal operations in telling a story, whether you're dancing it around a fire uh, with a, the skin of an antelope uh, in the shamanic way, or whether you're uh, un, unspooling uh, Oppenheimer. Uh, you you need to uh, give me a sense of uh, there's a place, there's a battleground, perhaps. Uh, there's a need, as you say, the call to adventure. Uh, there is uh, sometimes a polarization within that world that's presented. And maybe, and in most stories, I think there are two worlds. And so we see one world, uh, the native world of the hero, and it's usually polarized. And the hero has some relationship to that. Uh, they might be uh, in the foreground, uh, an important person there, or they might be way in the background, sort of invisible. Uh, they may be in conflict with their native world, uh, but we have the opportunity here to set those things up and um, get the audience hooked with usually some questions along the lines of uh, who are they? What do they want? What are their, by who are they? I mean, what are their qualities? Uh, what is their character? Uh, how do they behave under pressure? Um, and then what is driving them? What's the TikTok within them? Uh, what's missing? That's a big one that I find in uh, looking at a lot of myths and legends and fairy tales. Uh, often there is an absence. Uh, some piece is missing from the hero. They need something. Someone's taken away from their family unit. Um, so these are all, uh, I think, necessary operations to make a connection with the audience. So they feel in some way, this is the magic trick, some way, this is really about me. People are so profoundly self-centered that they need to be seduced into following the story by uh, giving them signals that uh, this is about someone who's very different from you. but in some certain ways, 
similar. They need things. They want things. They're frustrated. Uh, they're conflicted. They're trapped. Uh, and so uh, I am too. And I want to see how they handle it because I'm looking for clues about my own difficult situation. And I think that this is absolutely how people consume stories with eyes wide open going, well, where am I in this? And if I'm not in it, then I just check out. But if there's absolutely. something about me that I can use in my mysterious life, then I, I'm, I'm in and I'm paying attention. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, those 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 are the things that resonate with audiences. And uh, if you can create a, a three-dimensional character, the audience will start to see themselves in that character. And before you know it, they're along for the ride. And I think that that's what makes you turn pages incessantly or watch a movie three or four times because you're going through that experience that resonated with you from beginning to end. And uh, that's that's huge. Yeah, I, I just make one uh, room for one exception here which uh, I think we're seeing more of in the world of streaming where stories have gotten extreme and, and they're <laughs> you know, com very competitive, so they have to be a little bit startling. And so there is a kind of watching uh, in which you can't believe their behavior. And it's so outrageous that you say, this isn't anything like me. Uh, so how can this <laughs> person even continue uh, aren't they going to be destroyed by the natural forces of society? How are they getting away with this? Uh, but again, you watch with uh, attention and always with this in the back of your mind, mm, this might be something here I could use. And yeah. uh, so if their behavior is outrageous, maybe I need to be a little outrageous uh, and, and can learn from that. Yeah, I think that's a great point, too, about streaming, because um, it's kind of reinventing storytelling a little bit into this really long form, 10 hours, you know, 20 hours of watching over, you know, five seasons and everything. So you have the mini series now that's becoming. Pro. So, you know, I think storytellers are going to be going back to basics somehow with the hero's journey and hopefully the heroine's labyrinth and finding archetypal designs that they can repeat in different forms because that's the beauty of an archetypal design is it's the same underneath, but the way that it's expressed can be completely different from one uh, minute to the next. So they are extremely flexible archetypes. That's right. It's beautiful. Yes. 